I want as many people as possible playing Edge of Conan. I want them to get 10 million subscribers. That's what I want. Because what Edge of Conan, Conan finally put a lance through was this idea that post WoW you can't launch big. And they did. Why? Because there's an appetite for these games. There's a desire to play these games. We want them to get as many people as possible. We want WoW to just get bigger and bigger and bigger because it proves the point that there is a huge pool of people out there wanting to play MMO games, liking the subscription model, liking the gameplay they're doing. We're an iterative, generational experience for the old games. We're bringing something out that's cool. So when people say to me, tough, tough that Conan came out, I go, no, far from it. Wonderful that Conan came out. Wonderful that they've helped prove that prove what we've been saying all along that there are a lot of people out there who are looking for the next big cool thing, goblins, elves, orcs in it that's going to make them go. You know what? This is what I remember. This is what I want to play. This is what gets me buzzed and happy. And look at all the new stuff they brought. Why doesn't every game have this? It's like golf. You've got to understand, a good MMO is like golf. Yeah, sure, um, you, you can play golf, it's not that hard. Go off, get some sticks, knock some balls around, go to a local course, have a great time. You can become obsessed about golf, watch it on the TV, you buy t-shirts, you buy different clubs. Whenever you go on holiday, you go and have a round of golf. You play it at the weekend, even when it's raining. And there are some people who go, you know what, I'm gonna play in tournaments. I'm just gonna go off and play tournaments. And then there's even less people who go, I'm going to hit golf balls every day of my life for 23 years and then I'm going to try and get on the amateur tour and then there's an even smaller amount who go I'm going to go off and try and become professional and then there's one Tiger Woods. What happens with MMOs is people become obsessed with going what about the small amount of people at the top of the pyramid aren't you? It's like no, no it's like golf. We're making a game that's warm that's interesting, that's accessible, that's a hell of a lot of fun when you play it, that you can play it to whatever level you want. Do you want to be the greatest ever PvP RVR mega character? Do you want to be the MMO Target Woods? Well, you can. You've got to be really good, you've got to have skill, you're going to have commitment, you're going to have imagination, all the hobby words, and you know what? Play for 18 hours a day and just be really, really good. But for the rest of us, there's a whole world of MMO playing that you can have a crack at. So, of course we've got hardcore gameplay, but we've also got wonderfully open, easy to play, joyous gameplay. It's like DVDs. So you're at home and you're using your video recorder and you're very happy and you're able to record your your American gladiators and watch it whenever you want and you understand tapes and you've got racks of them and, and you've got used to using the timer and you just about understand the play buttons and then along come DVD players and for some people they fear it they go, oh, I'm too sure I want to do any of that I might put a CD in by mistake and it'll explode and then for other people they go oh I really like it I'm an early adopter I'm going to try it out MMOs are sort of like that and the period we're up to now is everyone knows what a DVD player is Everyone isn't afraid of them, everyone can see what they are, everyone realizes what they are. In fact, Blu-rays on the horizon are coming fast. There's a whole new area coming. We're like DVDs, in so much as everyone's ready for this. There's more people on the internet, there's more people understanding they can buy things. There's a generation, crusty old people, who are old, like what I is, who are very nervous about buying things online. But there's a new generation, they just don't care. They use iTunes, they use Amazon, they use eBay. It's as natural to them as knowing that mobile phones have always been here. My boy was talking to me and he said, Dad, when you were younger, he said, did you used to use your mobile phone a lot? I said, no, we didn't have mobile phones. He said, well, he said, did you used to go into like chat rooms a lot? No, we didn't, we didn't have chat rooms. He said, God, I bet you spent all your time on the internet then. Because as far as he's concerned, it's always existed. MMOs are in this wonderful landscape where people are used to them and much less fearful. And if you want to have a go at an online game and you want to have a go at, a, at an MMO, then your choice is becoming clear. There's a few dominant ones in the market and the new ones are coming on And the burden on us, on our design, on our implementation, on our graphics, on our installer, on our user interface, on our initial gameplay, 
is to give you the easiest possible ramp up to the glorious world, the glorious setting, the innovative campaign style, the great characters, and you know, the three and a half years of our soul that we've sold to make this game. So as creative director, your job is to go around at the beginning of a project and be boundlessly optimistic, hugely, hugely sympathetic. And you basically tell everyone who's focused like this, working on their little bit, it's all going to be great, it's going to come together and be wonderful. Every day, I have to realise that this is the joyous thing we're making. And then I have to come to terms with, we'll only be able to realise this little tiny piece. Worse, of the big idea, the little tiny piece is probably the worst piece of the big idea. And so, it's relentless optimism in the face of daily crushing despair. That's your job. And you go around telling everyone it's going to be great. Because the game is actually in your head. The, the server code doesn't work yet, the animations don't work yet, the graphics don't work yet. This is the early part of the, of the, of the process. As the game gets made, more and more of the game starts to come together. And actually, the necessity to make people believe gets replaced with the ability for people to actually perceive and play. So the bit we're in now is, I don't have to go around saying, it's going to be great. People can just log in and play it and see that actually, on the whole, we've kept our promises, we had vision, and we delivered. Here's a thought for you. The 1980s. Now, some of you probably weren't born, but if you were, and I had to sum up the 1980s for me as an English lad in a country where it was raining, I'd say computer games were all about home taping. Home taping and the internet of its day. I didn't log on to my ASP, I went to a news agent. I didn't go to a website, I looked at a magazine. I didn't read blogs, I read articles. I didn't look at JPEGs, I looked at photographs in the magazine. That's the 80s for me, home taping and magazines. And then I thought about the 90s, and that's 10 years of my life. I summed it up as follows, the PlayStation. Have a think about it, it was the 90s. 